Democracy is only as good as the quality of information available to the voters. So we at the Jefferson Area Tea Party have taken on as one of our principal missions trying to convey to the public the most useful information they could possibly have when they go into the voting booth in the most concentrated form. And that's why we're having candidate forums. We'll begin with three-minute opening statements, followed by a series of questions of varying lengths from yes, no, to three-minute answers, and followed by one-minute closing statements. Uh, Don Clark will be our timekeeper, and where it's a question longer than 30 seconds, when you get to 15 seconds, he will hold up a blue card, and when your time is up, he will hold up a red card. Candidates, uh, it's time for your opening statements. Let's start in alphabetical order. Uh, in your opening statements, please tell us who you are, why you're running, and what your principal priorities would be on City Council. Bruce, yeah. Good evening. Thank you very much for letting allow us here tonight. Well, my name is Mike Ferrugio, and I've been an employee of the City of Charlottesville for 25 years as a police officer, and I just retired about one month ago. I work the streets and the neighborhoods of Charlottesville on foot, bike, car, and motorcycle, and I've seen the city's problems firsthand. I've spoken to countless citizens, business owners, students, various government employees from all three municipalities nearby, and heard the concerns and direction of our city. There isn't much about crime, public safety, or being a government employee that I haven't experienced firsthand. As a public servant in law enforcement, I work patrol, investigations, community policing, traffic, and administrative services. I've seen close up how policies affect city employees and city work. I want to put this knowledge and other experience to you for work as your city councilor. I have two children in our public schools, Jake and Emma, are 13 and 11. They've attended Jackson Via, Walker, and Buford. And as a parent, I've seen our school system work close up. My kids have greatly benefited from our school system. In fact, I've met parents in these schools who were just teens when I was walking the beat in their neighborhood, and they have children that are the same age as my children. I've taught them there, and I've met with them on the streets over the years. I first became interested in city government through my neighborhood association in 1999. I served on the Fry Springs Neighborhood Association since that time, in every role that they've had. I've been the treasurer, secretary, vice president, and president numerous times. Through there, I learned how development affects our city and how we can have an impact on it from the neighborhood level. From there, I was also asked to and appointed to the planning commission for the city, where I spent four years there. There, I learned how new development will work within our city without changing our city's heritage. But it wasn't until I attended the Sorensen Institute for Political Leadership at the University of Virginia that I realized that it was possible for someone like me to run for city council. I always thought the day might come, and then there came the rain tax last year. When the council shifted $5.8 million from our enterprise fund to the general fund, tax money that was meant to be spent on maintenance and repair, that kind of pushed me over the limit. City council created a hole in our maintenance budget that was only filled by creating a new tax. It's a tax, in my mind, because everybody has to pay, except for the city. It's a regressive tax and it raises the cost of living for anybody that works or has a business in the city. Nonprofits such as churches have to pay, the Salvation Army has to pay, shopping centers and thus those that shop, and all homes, thus all renters. Um, and this is because for the past 15 years we did not do a good job maintaining our city infrastructure. While I've been knocking on doors in our neighborhoods, many have asked me about other possible misuse of public money, namely why we spent $14 million on a fire station when the county only spent $2 million. Some fairly say it's like comparing apples to oranges, but apples and oranges are both fruit, and I've looked into what was going on there at the fire department. I can go on with numerous studies, endless delays, shifting of tax dollars, resolutions that have nothing to do with governing our city, and just some of what the voters have told me they wanted to change. And I thank you and help to explain more tonight. Mr. Fenwick. Good evening. Thank you for coming out tonight. I'm Bob Fenwick, Democratic candidate for Charlottesville City Council. My background is in science with a Bachelor of Science in Physics from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Engineering with graduate and undergraduate study in civil engineering at the George Washington University School of Engineering in Washington, D.C. And almost seven years in the Army Corps of Engineers with a tour in South Vietnam in the uh, 
as brigade engineer in the 4th Infantry Division in the Central Highlands, and both of my boys have served in Afghanistan. And finally, business experience with more than 40 years as owner, manager, foreman, carpenter, and everything else with a startup and stay up general construction contracting company, Fenwick Construction. I know how to budget, how to train workers, how to get things done. I've been doing it for longer than I can remember. But I know there's more to community life than committees, task forces, and processes. There's action. As a movie and TV producer, a novelist, a poet, among other things, I have a key respect for the arts and what they bring to a community, economically as well as quality of life. I also believe I have a responsibility to my community. I am a member of Believers and Achievers, a volunteer ex-felon peer support group whose aim is to prevent ex-felons from returning to jail. I figure if I can help a man or a woman, I help their children as well. In recent years and because of the national recession, I've tried to inject some energy and enthusiasm in small businesses with Cash Mob, a social network driven promotion to flood small businesses with paying customers. And I know for a fact that the community support for Cash Mob has saved several businesses and in the process, save jobs. I look forward to a spirited discussion tonight. Thank you. This is Zaykos. Good evening. I'm really glad to have a chance to be here, and thanks to all the folks who worked hard to make this event happen. I think it's actually great to have back-to-back -back forums for city council and county offices tonight, because as you know, in many ways, we're one community, and the things that happen in one locality affect the other. I'm an advocate for anything we can do to break down barriers that divide us, geographic or political, so we can work together to make this a great place to live and work. Local government doesn't have a whole lot to do with politics. Paving streets, maintaining public safety, educating children, providing infrastructure for water, sewer and economic development, creating a place where people feel safe and valued. These are things we do because we care about our local community, no matter what our politics say at a national level. And we have a lot of ways for people to be involved, including forums like this. For those of you who may not know me, I'm Kristen Sakis. I'm in my first term on city council, and I'm the vice mayor. I'm a reporter by training with a master's degree from Northwestern University. And I'm, since coming to Charlottesville 19 years ago, I've been a grant writer and administrator for several local nonprofits. And I'm currently an editor for an international translation agency. My husband, Joe, and I have two uh, grown daughters, and we've also had four foster children, the last of whom is a freshman at Radford this year, so we're empty nesters. There are several things I'm proud of having done during my first term on council. I introduced the idea of the, our town meetings and the youth council to make sure we listen to people affected by the decisions that we're making. The downtown ambassadors program to help people feel welcome and safe on the downtown mall. Paperless agendas at council and planning commission meetings to reduce costs and protect the environment. Language banning discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and the Human Rights Commission to formalize our commitment to equality and fairness. And participation in the City of Promise and other initiatives to help end generational poverty. I'm chair of the Regional Jail Authority Board, vice chair of the MPO, the Regional Planning Body, and vice chair of the National, Transportation, or National Council for Youth Education and Families. I took office as the recession was being fully felt in Charlottesville. It could have been a time of retrenchment, but we've made it a time of progress. Our downtown mall, whose businesses are almost all locally owned, is thriving. Our economic development office is responsive and creative, and we're one of the only AAA bond-rated cities in Virginia. We've added miles of sidewalks and bike lanes and parkland. We're seeing deteriorating housing repaired, new affordable housing built, people being trained for good jobs, and neighborhoods being protected and strengthened. And new businesses have chosen to locate here, drawn by our investment in quality infrastructure and excellent schools. We have a lot of work left to do, and that's why I'm running for re-election. And joining efforts with Bob Fenwick, whose commitment to the environment and experience as a small business person will provide needed voice on council. Together, we'll work to make sure that Charlottesville continues to be a great place to live and work. Thank you. Colonel Weber. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Buddy Weber, and I've been a resident of Charlottesville and an active participant in my neighborhood and this community for the past 20 years. 
Most of you know who I am, so I won't bore you with my biography and my qualifications for this elected office. Instead, let me discuss a little bit of Charlottesville history to illustrate why I am running. Next year marks the 60th anniversary of two seminal events in the history of Charlottesville, namely the U.S. Supreme Court decision styled Berman v. Parker and the establishment of the Charlottesville Redevelopment and Housing Authority. Most of you likely have not heard of Berman, but I can almost guarantee that every African American in Charlottesville knows of it. In Berman, the court gave the city of Charlottesville the legal green light to take and raise an entire community known as Vinegar Hill under the banner of urban renewal. Berman is no longer good law in Virginia. <clears throat> After the even more infamous Kelo decision in 2005, the people of Virginia demanded and passed a property rights amendment to the Virginia Constitution. The people get it. They know abuse of government power when they see it. The CRHA was created by city council with the mission to clear the slums and manage public housing. The CRHA promoted the Vinegar Hill Project and over the objections of the NAACP built West Haven, our most notorious public housing development. How is that working today? I represented a young black man a few years ago in court on a probation violation. A nice young man, gentle, sincere, problem with drugs, no history of violence. His wife testified on his behalf. She told the judge how they loved each other, how he loved his children, and how they loved him, and how much she wanted to maintain an intact family. But she could not afford to live anywhere but in public housing, and they would not let him live with her because he was a convicted felon. In 14 years of criminal defense work, I have seen these patterns repeat, and seen firsthand the petty abuses of power that our neighbors endure almost daily that keep them in poverty and impede their ability to enter the mainstream of economic life in Charlottesville. Who are the they that the wife referred to, the they that breaks up a family and forces children to grow up without a father? Like it or not, the they is us. We the people of Charlottesville. And more specifically, it is our elected city council who has a responsibility to know and the authority to change. My opponents in this election have offered only excuses. CRHA is an independent agency and therefore beyond the scope of our power. I disagree. The CRHA is a creature of city council and city council remains both the legislative and executive authority in the city, simply an excuse. Taking over the CRHA will cost money, maybe, but since when has cost been an impediment to the utopian fantasies of my opponents? After all, we have already spent, we already spend more money per capita than all but one of more than 130 jurisdictions in Virginia. And they just allocated $17,000 as a bonus to the city manager to keep the issue quiet until after the election. But what about the long-term cost of lives lost generation after generation after generation? We need that public discussion. History could be a cruel teacher. One core principle of leadership holds that the governing body can always delegate authority, but never responsibility. Weber. Elect me and my good friend Mike Ferruccio will bring that brand of leadership to city council.